Is this the um, International Association of Scientologists? Yeah, yeah, it's a membership organization. You are at the right place. Yeah, great. Um, so I... Who remembers Neopets? I used to love this site back in the early 2000s when I wasn't rearranging my MySpace top eight or unbuttoning my collar, even though I was a prefect. I know I spend a lot of time on here. Are you ready for adventure? Explore Neopia, a world of mysterious lands where anything can happen. For those who missed the hype, Neopets was a website where you created and then looked after your own virtual pets, like Stephen the Brave here, who is, oh my God, Dying of hunger right now. Whoops. Side note, by the way, uh, unlike, say, a Tamagotchi, which is programmed to perish if you don't feed it, um, a Neopet can't do that. Uh, which means, dear viewer, if you at any point had a Neopet and have forgotten about it, um, it's, it's still out there and it's alive and it's oh so hungry. Anyway, the site was mostly about two main activities, exploring the world of Neopia or playing one of its many, many flash games. And these could vary in quality pretty drastically, but some weren't half bad, even if they weren't exactly original ideas. Oh, and shout out to Extreme Potato Counter, the game that really is exactly what it sounds like. Yeah. The site is still up and running today, although very little has changed in more recent years. But at its height, Neopets boasted tens of millions of active users. There was a trading card game from Wizards of the Coast. My dog's had a go on that, didn't she? Look at that, little git. Uh, there were Happy Meals toys, talk of a movie. Neopets was a huge, huge deal. And for about five of those years, as it was first exploding into popularity, the site was owned and operated by a group belonging to an extremely controversial religious organization, one that has been widely criticized for both the exploitation of its own members and the harassment of those who speak out against it. I'm talking about the Church of Scientology, founded in the early 1950s by American author L. Ron Hubbard. But man, uh, man poses a great many problems. Neopets and Scientology, how did those two things end up getting mixed up together? And what kind of impact did that relationship have on the site itself? To find out answers to those questions, I traveled to London to meet the original creators of Neopets, Adam and Donna Powell. You know, we had no idea it existed. And you know, we don't really care about people's religion or political yeah. views. It doesn't really interest us, to be honest. It's, you know, whatever floats your boat. Right. But yeah, it, it got a little bit interesting. This story really starts in 1999 in the United States, as the pair originally planned to set up an advertising network in San Jose. They'd been doing something similar back in the UK, and had been approached by a couple of potential investors interested in working together. However, this venture lasted roughly three weeks before the relationship with these new partners ended very dramatically. According to the Powells, there was a huge argument which involved death threats, the police being called, and eventually the pair just deciding to pack up and move to Miami instead. It was here that the two of them, feeling understandably jaded towards the world of advertising, began work on their side project, the virtual pet website they would call Neopets. Now, the original idea for the site involved the whole thing being built around a 2D top-down adventure game in which you explored a multiplayer world with your pet and then encountered others doing the same. Adam and Donna had recruited a third person to work on this while they concentrated on the rest of the site. But the thing is, that central game idea, which sounds incredibly ambitious to me, never actually materialized. In fact, the person they were working with disappeared and Adam and Donna were left with just the work that they'd done themselves. Screw it, they thought. Let's put something out there anyway. On November 15th, 1999, Neopets was officially launched. Some of the earliest pets from that time designed by Donna are still in the game today. Scorchio, Chia, Waki, Uni, those are all hers. The art may have changed in the years since, but those core ideas remain. However, there were some pets from this period which were um, a little different. For example, these included Macy Gray, as in the singer, Pat Sharp from Funhouse, and my personal favorite, Bruce Forsyth, the television presenter. To see you. They were all options as you created your account for the first time as your starting Neopets. It was either me or Adam, I don't know. I found an image of him on the internet and just stick him in the circle and that he's a pet now. So he... I just like drew over him in flash, basically. I don't know, we're just probably drunk and doing stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't be until the Neopets team eventually hired its own in-house lawyer that these pets were removed 
to protect the site from legal issues. While I say removed, Bruce Forsyth became Bruce the Penguin, a neopet known for its love of dancing. But back then things were just quick and exciting. The site was being updated almost every day with things that were often half finished. And Neopets basically took over Adam and Donna's life. They would work on it throughout the day, go out for dinner and talk about the site, then come home and work on it some more. Because despite their haphazard approach to development, Neopets was proving extremely popular. And this proved to be both a blessing and a curse for its creators. We launched in November and then by December, it was getting to the point where they wanted like six thousand dollars a month to just run the service. Wow! And How many people would that be for then? Was oh, I mean, <laughs> so I know we had we had a hundred thousand pages a day in the start of December. Then, like, we went home for Christmas and it, it crashed. There was nothing. There was no down page. It was just literally can't connect to the server. That was it. I think it's really worth trying to imagine what this must have felt like for the pair of them because it helps explain what comes next. So picture this: you've just moved to America at a young age, and you've had an awful time of it so far. The advertising industry, which you thought you wanted to be involved with, it's not working out. You want out of that industry. And somehow, impossibly, your passion project, the thing you dream about when you go to sleep at night, is proving to be extremely popular. You're not making any money from it just yet, but that's surely just a matter of time with this many players. And right then, just as everything seems to be going so well, it crashes and you can't afford to keep it going. Desperate for help, in that moment, you're introduced by a friend to a possible investor. These are the Scientologists. We didn't know. It's not something that pops up in conversation. <laughs> I've never heard of it, really. <laughs> and so, as the year 2000 begins, a deal is struck in which Doug Doring and a group of investors purchase majority shares in this new company called Neopets Incorporated, leaving Adam and Donna with 18% between them. Was it the right decision, do you think, if you... No, no, no. No, the right decision, we weren't aware. We were totally and utterly naive. The right decision would probably have been for us to go to a VC firm in Silicon Valley. Right. Well, anything. Uh, find yeah. anyone that has any experience of running games. Right. I think we need to take a break from Neopets here to talk about who Doug Doring actually is. I did request an interview with him for this piece, but that was graciously declined. Now, anecdotally, as I've been researching the story, I've been told or I've read at numerous points that Doug Doring and his wife are two of the top donors to the Church of Scientology ever. But that's been somewhat difficult to verify. What I have found, however, is this. A photograph from a gala that happened last year, weirdly enough, not too far away from here in East Grinstead. And uh, this is the two of them receiving something called the Patron Excalibur Award, which is looks like an impressive trophy, right? But what is it for? What did they do to receive that honor? Well, to find out, I'm going to try something a little unusual here and give the uh, Church of Scientology a call, or at least the local subset of the church that's based in East Grinstead. So, let's see how that goes. Is this the um, International Association of Scientologists? Yeah, yeah, it's a membership organization. You are at the right place. Yeah, great. Um, so I, uh, I'm, I'm working on a story about um, a man called Doug Doring, and I saw that recently he attended an awards evening at uh, St. Hill and uh, received an award. Uh-huh. Uh, it was the, uh, the, the... Yeah. You know, I don't have this type of data. So he received something called the Patron Excalibur Award. I was wondering if you could tell me what that, what that award is, was for. Ah, yeah, I, I wasn't. I believe the award night happened at at St. Hill. Is that right? Yeah, I myself didn't um, attend this year, but um, yes, there is always one. Could you could you tell me what what the um, Patron Excalibur Award is? I just w sort of wanted to know what, um, why he was presented with it. Because he gave um, a, a certain, um, you know, he supported the association, so that's why he got that. Uh, right. Okay. But I would. Like the person that can, you know, I'm just not the right person, so I would have to give you the right person to answer these questions. Okay. Can can that person get back to you? Uh, because sure. They're in America, you know, so they're not uh, they're they're sleeping right now. Uh, yeah, sure. Would you like my number? Yes, please. Okay, good. Yeah, so I will let them know to give you a call and have the uh, data uh, that I can give and so prepared. Okay. Well, um, thank you very much. You are welcome. Goodbye. 
I guess I'll let you know if I receive a call back in the next few days. I did not receive a call back from the International Association of Scientologists, but I did, however, find a copy of this. It's membership brochure from 2006. Now this brochure explains that here at St Hill Manor in East Grinstead, once a year a series of awards are presented to those who have reached a certain level of donation. Interestingly, when this was made available, the Patron Excalibur Award was yet to exist. And that tells us something interesting. It tells us that the award Doug Doring and his wife received is likely to be of a higher level than any of the awards advertised in here, suggesting they've donated significantly more than the $10 million required for a Patron Laureate. In fact, the general consensus online seems to be that a patron Excalibur is probably somewhere around the $20 million mark. And so there we are, the majority shareholder of Neopets in 2000 was indeed a Scientologist, and not just a casual member of the church, but someone that has donated millions upon millions of dollars over his lifetime. But what did that mean for the site itself? Did Scientology ever have a genuine impact on Neopets? I asked Adam and Donna about the moment they first realised who they were in business with. I think it was like the interview questions, wasn't it? Yeah, there was some, there was some weirdness, so, because every time an uh, interview came in, they had to do this personality test thing, with El, copyright Elrond Hubbard at the bottom. Right. So we started probably not Googling in, in the day, but like Alta Vista or Lycosing to find out more information. <laughs> and then we found this kind of, the Scientology website, and we're like, oh, Doug Doring, okay, he's a Scientologist. And then we found every single member of staff they had, all Scientologists. Right. So we're like, hmm. Bit weird. And, and we, um, then we started sort of reading more about it. And we're like, oh my god, what we've done. To begin with, I'm told Adam and Donna remained almost entirely in charge of the site's creative direction, although Doring and his board would become more involved as they pushed for something called immersive advertising, a term they would go on to trademark. Unlike the advertising you may have watched before this video, although looking at our stats, you, you probably didn't, immersive advertising was meant to blur the distinction between a site's content and the advertisement itself. Players would suddenly find themselves visiting the in-game Disney theatre with their Neopet before heading over to the McDonald's shop for a spot of lunch. And critics argued that this was an unethical way of advertising products, particularly so when the average age of the player base was so low. But it feels a bit of a stretch to blame that form of advertising on Scientology, doesn't it? I guess we have to point the finger at, I don't know, capitalism there? But that's not to say there was not some internal conflict over the years. There was one. In, there was one situation, but it never saw the light of day because we killed it with fire, basically. So they brought over this lady called Janine or something, I can't remember her name. And uh, she was a Scientologist and her job, she was brought in as Head of Education or Learning yeah, head at, education. at Neopets. And she, her job was basically to use L. Ron Hubbard's educational thing and put it right. on the site and basically teach kids about Scientology, and we went apeshit. <laughs> yeah. This idea never reached the site, but I was told about one obscure reference to Scientology which you can still find on Neopets today. Following the acquisition in 2000, the Neopets office was based out of California, and it wouldn't be all that uncommon to be sat there working at your desk and to glance up and see someone from the board giving a tour. This might include the odd celebrity face like actress Callie Preston, who made a couple of appearances over the years, but apparently there was a group of free Scientologists that made a real lasting impression on the team. I remember once these three, uh, like the three people came in and they weren't really introduced and they just looked evil, you know, like the bad guys <laughs> in Superman 2, you know? <laughs> right. um, so we actually, we, we started making characters on the site about these random people who came around the office. <laughs> the three. The three. And it was just like, <laughs> and the artists were in on the joke as well, they were like, you know those guys that came in, those are going to be bad guys now. <laughs> in June 2005, Neil Pets was acquired once again. Doring and the Board of Investors agreed to sell their company to Viacom for $160 million, and here ended the link between the site and the Church of Scientology. This was also a goodbye for Adam and Donna, who sold their shares too, and then moved on to new projects. But this wasn't the last the power would hear from the church, it turned out. Shortly after the sale, both Adam and Donna were invited to visit the Los Angeles Scientology Celebrity Center. Here, they were introduced to Nancy Cartwright, who you might know better as the voice of Bart Simpson, and then offered a full tour of the centre and its facilities. This is after the sale. They didn't after do the anything sale. while we were working there. Right, as soon as we had the money, they were like, oh, okay. let's get them. Okay. 
They were trying to take us to the Elrond Hammer's office, and we were like, no, we've got to go, and just ran to the car. Was that, is that like a, is there a procedure to like have they try and introduce you to that? Is I think that... so. Yeah, I think we got the, you've got money, this is the way, because they right. took us to some fancy dinner there. So <laughs> you know, just maybe freaked out, maybe out on the table. The office in honor of the man himself. It stands as a permanent representation that this church is committed to upholding his legacy for the benefit of the millions who live and work here. And that's the new Church of Scientology of Los Angeles. And that's the story of how Neopets ended up being run by Scientologists for a good five years. Uh, this one, by the way, uh, I think... Okay, we're turning you off now. Uh, this one's called Kachik, and it's a sort of mouse-type Pokemon. Did I say Pokemon? I meant Neopet with uh, glowing red cheeks and often comes in yellow. I'm not sure where that idea came from. I'm going to put him over there before I get myself in trouble. Um, yes, thank you for watching this video, and thank you so much if you're uh, a patron of People Make Games. We could not make this stuff without you. So, yeah, we really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.